I don't like irony. My wife hates it too. I have no irony in my body whatsoever. I don't like ironic people. I don't understand the mindset. You see a guy, some barista, and he's wearing a Journey t-shirt, and you go, man, that's a bitchin' Journey t-shirt. He goes, I know, it's fine. I got it, I got it at a thrift shop. It's awesome, right? It's, it's funny. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you just say Journey was funny? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Tucker. I don't know what egg you hatched out of or what spaceship they dropped you onto Earth. Journey is not funny. Let me tell you something about Journey. <laughs> journey is so amazing, so beautiful, so powerful, so impressive that right now as we're talking, there's a tiny Filipino man. <laughs> acting like he's the lead singer of Journey. <laughs> and none of us care. We go to every Journey concert with the little Filipino lead singer, and we're like, fuck it, three out of four, I'm going anyway. <laughs> they found him on YouTube doing karaoke Journey songs. He doesn't speak English. He's like, when the lights go down. I don't have to pay for the song, but you get the point. <laughs> he sings Journey for an hour and a half, and then the meet and greet, he's like, ding, dong, dong, dong. He doesn't even know what the fuck you're talking about. That's how great Journey is, you asshole, you ironic dick. <laughs> Take your irony and beat it. <laughs> see a guy wearing a Neil Diamond tour jacket, and you go, hey, oh, oh, hey, bro, did you see Neil Diamond? Which one of these cities? You know, they always have like the cities on the back of a tour jacket. You're like, whoa, hey, you gotta catch up to the guy. It's a Neil Diamond tour jacket, it's cool. Bro, hey, whoa, hey, buddy, did you see Neil Diamond? Which one of those cities? Which show were you at? Because I went to that. He goes, oh, no, I just picked this up because I thought it was funny. And you're like, what? And like a part of you breaks, like Neil Diamond is funny. Sweet Caroline. Okay, so we're all assholes? <laughs> Apparently, he's kind of awesome. We all knew the words with one sentence. <laughs> and don't lie, when you see a Neil Diamond in concert and you yell, oh, 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 you are yelling louder than you've ever yelled anything in your life. Your, your four-year-old could run into traffic and you're like, oh, stop, would be half as loud as your oh, 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 because in the back of your mind, you're hoping against hope that Neil Diamond just stops the entire show and says, hold on a minute. <laughs> that was the greatest goddamn oh, oh, oh I've ever heard. I want you to come on tour with me and be my permanent oh, oh, oh. You know that's true. So now you know what I mean by irony. I don't have it in me, and neither does my bride. Similar hates. There's a couple times in my life where irony has completely bitten me in my ass. When I've done something to be ironic, when I've done something that I thought was funny, it's completely backfired. I have two examples for you that you're gonna love. My wife is filming a movie in Atlanta. I went with her, she's there four days. She has one day off and she goes, you know Bon Jovi's playing next door. I'm like, oh my God, we have to go, it'll be so funny. That's what I said, let's go see Bon Jovi, it will be so funny. And she goes, it will, right? I go, yeah, it'll be hilarious. They're in their 40s, their pants are too tight. Let's go and just laugh and have a good time. And you know what? It was funny, to Bon Jovi. Because two songs in, we're standing on our chairs. Ah! Frankie is still welcome. Ah! We are shoving each other out of the way to try to touch John Bon Jovi's dick. We're just pulling people by their hair. We're in the sixth row and we're making our way forward. Get the fuck, fuck you, bitch. Ah! 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 And my pants were too tight. back in the hotel high-fiving. That was amazing, he looked at me. He looked at me too. All true. 
We were in Las Vegas once, my wife and I. This is obviously before we had children. Uh, the reason I have to put that addendum in is because the whole point of this story is that my wife and I were very, very high, real, real high. <laughs> in Las Vegas, just started dating, and we always got our pot from Grandma Helen. My wife's grandma always gave us pot. And it was always good pot, nice pot, easy pot, easy like, so I don't want to keep paying for songs on this damn special. <laughs> Man, that guy likes music. <laughs> we used to smoke all of Grandma Helen's pot, and then on this particular trip to Las Vegas, Grandma Helen gave us uh, a nice, fair amount, a lot of pot. <laughs> but she didn't tell us that it was a different kind of pot. Now, before I go any further, you must know that Grandma Helen Alice Spore is completely healthy, and she's kicked the Grim Reaper in the nuts six times. She's given last rites by the Catholic Church three or four times, and every time everybody thinks she's on death's door, she gets up out of a hospital bed and goes, take me home. <laughs> she's completely fine. So when I tell you this, I don't want you to be like, eee, she's fine, she's watching tonight, she's great, okay? <laughs> she used to give us pot. Pot, grass, reefer, marijuana. Now, this particular trip to Las Vegas, what she did not tell us was that the hospital gave her a new kind of pot because after getting uh, last rites by the Catholic Church, they gave her palliative care, marijuana. If you don't know what palliative care means, and I pray to God that you never know what it means, it means you are going to die. The doctors, nurses, and specialists went, eh, fuck it, I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Give her palliative care. That just means give her nice pillows because she's dying anyway. They gave her palliative care marijuana, the kind of marijuana that they give you when you know you're dying. If you're gonna meet St. Peter, you might as well shake his hand giggling. That's the kind of pot. <laughs> that my wife and I are now in possession of, and we didn't realize that it was that kind of pot. It's like morphine, it's like other level, and we have no idea. We're in a hotel room in Las Vegas. We each have a joint to ourselves, awake and bake, nine in the morning. We smoke each of our entire joints by ourselves. And I'm sitting on a couch, and she's sitting on a chair, and about two hours go by before we realize none of us have spoken. <laughs> two hours, I'm not exaggerating at all. Two hours, mouths open. And after two hours, my wife said to me, did I just say that out loud? <laughs> we were, how do you put it, fucked. We, and there is no worse high than a surprise high. No worse, and if you've ever gotten high in your life, you know that, no worse high than a surprise high. You're at a Dodger game, it's the second inning, and your buddy goes, whoa, you didn't eat the whole cookie, did you? And you're like, what? <laughs> You gave me a cookie, I ate it, what's the problem? Oh, dude. Do these chairs have seat belts? You're gonna need one, bro. Like what, it's just a pot cookie, who cares? And then in the fourth inning, you look at your, some strangers next to you, you're like, everybody in the bullpen's talking about me. The first base coach keeps giving me the finger, look, watch this, look, look, there you, look. I'm not high. We were gone. We realized we have to get out of the hotel room because the walls are closing in, the ceiling's getting shorter, and the carpet's doing funny things to our eyes. We need to get out of there. Now, we can't hang out in the casino at the hotel in Las Vegas. We're both sort of famous, I suppose. Fa All right, how about this? We're both famous enough that when you're that fucking high, you don't want to be at a card table and have people going, hey, you want to take a bet? Ah! That'll scare the shit out of you. We realize we have to get off premises entirely, but we don't know what to do. My wife looks at the Las Vegas magazine that they put in your room when you go to Las Vegas, and she goes, oh my God. I go, what? She goes, we should go to the Liberace Museum. Yeah. And you are thinking the exact same thing that I thought, ironic. I thought, we, yeah, it'll be funny. That's what you were thinking, right? Admit it. Yes. And that's why we went, to be ironic. 
And apparently we were so high, we did not look at a mirror before, <laughs> before we left the room. We decided to walk it, in my wife's immortal words, it's only 14 blocks. She didn't say a conti like that. I don't know why she said it's only it's only 14 blocks. She's not my wife's a nice person. I don't know why I said it like that. She said it's only 14 blocks. But Las Vegas blocks, it's like, whoa, there's New York City. There's a fucking pyramid. Holy shit. Like they're different blocks. You're not in Manhattan. You fall, yeah. So we go out, it is a hundred and eight degrees. My wife is wearing pajama bottoms, Ugg boots, a bikini top. Oh, we're gone, yeah. I'm wearing a Def Leppard t-shirt, denim cut-off shorts. <laughs> and flip-flops. True. We are walking, it's 108 degrees. We are sweating. My wife's mascara is running like she's a rejected Kiss character. <laughs> It is brutal, we're not gonna make it. Don't forget, we're panic stricken because we're so high and we don't realize why we're so high. We don't know we took, you're about to die pot. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have diarrhea. I'm walking, I'm trying not to let one go. <laughs> we finally, after an eternity, get to the Liberace Museum. We open the Liberace Museum doors. The air conditioning inside is preset to 64 degrees and we get a wash with cool air. And my wife and I are both thinking, he's already the greatest artist of all time. <laughs> I don't give a sh I don't know anything about him, but his fucking museum has air conditioning. He's the greatest. <laughs> all I know about Liberace, and I'm not joking, prior to that trip, was Bugs Bunny sitting at a piano <laughs> and looking out and saying, I wish my brother George was here. That's my entire wealth of Liberace knowledge. I knew nothing about the man. I walk into the 66, 64 degree museum. Oh, so nice. I love Liberace. It's cool in here. And there is a diamond encrusted piano right when you walk in. A, a piano with diamonds all over. It must have cost like $50 million. And then there's outfits behind glass cases, like fedoras and like fedora hats and like beautiful scarves made out of ostrich feathers with the fucking head still attached. The ostrich is like, really? <laughs> and you realize, wow, this guy was famous. Like people thought he was straight. That's fame. <laughs> I mean, let's be real for a second. Liberace would come out. He didn't hide it at all. Liberace would come and go, hi, hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And then there was housewives in Madison, Wisconsin going, oh, Lee, wait for me. Like, they thought he was straight. They, they didn't, you know. The whole time we're in the Liberace Museum, they are piping in the most beautiful piano music I have ever heard in my life. And I look at the docent, the guy working at the Liberace Museum, and I go, is this Rufus Wainwright? Is this Bach, Beethoven? Like, what is this amazing piano music? And he goes, it's, it's Liberace here. <laughs> You're in the Liberace Museum, so we play Liberace. And that moment, at that moment, I realized what an asshole I was. Because we went there to be ironic. And it wasn't funny at all. We got an education. And let me tell you something. There's been a few mistakes in my life that I wish I could take back. Going to the Liberace Museum is not one of them. However, I'm going to tell you one of the worst mistakes you could ever make. Palliative care marijuana <laughs> and the Liberace Museum gift shop. <laughs> An $1,100 mistake. Everything seems like a good idea. Liberace plates, Liberace shot glasses, Liberace coffee mugs, Liberace cookbooks. Hey, let's have a Liberace dinner party. We'll invite 12 people, get more plates, and we'll, we'll plan it on our Liberace calendar. They sell everything. My wife and I are still high, still freaking out. We're like, how do we get all these plates home? They sell Liberace luggage at the Liberace gift shop on wheels, on rollers, so you can walk it back to your hotel because they know you're high. So there we are, like people on meth, just like putting plates and saucers with Liberace's picture on it. And like, 
shot glasses like, can you zip it? Will it fit for a Liberace dinner party? And we walk back to the hotel, dragging our Liberace luggage up Flamingo Boulevard, 108 degrees. And there's a picture of Liberace on the side of the luggage, wearing dolphin shorts and red, white, and blue suspenders and tassels going, yeah. And we're just pulling it up the street. My flip flops are coming off because they're melting. My wife's Uggs smell like a skunk farted. It's horrible. It is brutal, and my denim shorts are cutting into my thighs, and all I can pray and hope is that at that exact moment, a married couple drove by, and the wife said, look at this asshole. 